Welcome to part one, the not all men are sly foxes annotations. And if you notice in this video and all of the other subsequent videos, the title of our text is going to be abbreviated as such. In this video, what I am going to do is review some reading comprehension strategies that we can use as we are reading Not All Men Are Sly Foxes. And I am also going to be reviewing the prompt and the directions to make sure that we are all on the same page. So two strategies that we can always use as we are annotating um, and reading the text is paraphrasing and summarizing. As you guys remember from last week and also possibly the beginning of the school year, paraphrasing is when you are rewording a text and breaking it down to make sure that you can clarify what is being said. When you are summarizing, what you are doing is you're writing a brief statement about the main points or the main idea of the text. Both of these are written in your own words, but they're typically done for two different reason, reasons. Summarizing, you would do to get an idea of what the entire paragraph or the entire text is about, while paraphrasing, you would more so use if you want to um, make sure that you understand a sentence or a paragraph, or if you want to rewrite it so that it is written in a style that you most closely connect to. Another strategy that you can utilize is context clues. Um, this one I would typically use for words that I'm not 100% sure. If you don't have access to a dictionary and you're not sure of what a word means, you could utilize some clues in the story to help you figure it out. And some of the clues that you could use are some of the other words and phrases that are in the same sentence, in sentences around, um, you could utilize tone, you could utilize um, imagery, what it is that you are picturing to help you um, identify what that unknown word means um, in terms of context clues. And last but not least, we have the thumb rule. Um, this one I utilize mostly when um, I am answering multiple choice questions and it's telling me to go back to certain lines to answer the questions or certain paragraphs to answer the question. This one I would also utilize um, if there is a sentence or more than one sentence that I'm not sure with. Um, I'm not sure what it means, excuse me. Um, this is very similar to context clues. However, I am focusing on a sentence as a whole. So when I am utilizing the thumb rule, what I'm doing is I'm reading two sentences before and two sentences after to help me understand a sentence um, and to make sure that I am familiar with what it is trying to tell me. So those are some strategies that we could utilize. Um, one other thing that I do want to let you guys know um, is if you are looking for a specific word or phrase on a page that you are currently on, these are two very quick shortcuts that you could utilize. If you were on a Mac, you would use Command F, which you could see here. And if you are using a PC, you can use Control F, which you can see here. And it's very quickly, you can type in what you were looking for, find words, and it will bring you directly to wherever that is. Okay. So now to go into the assignment, I'm just going to make those a little bigger because it'll be easier for me to read it. I'm getting old, guys. So part one is the Not All Men Are Sly Foxes Annotation. And it starts off by gender as different from sex is to a debatable, de debatable degree something we learn from the world around us. Very similar to what Mead says. Media, such as children's literature, can reinforce negative stereotypes which get in the way of establishing equality between the sexes. So it looks like the sentence here is saying that because of stereotypes, um, males and females are not treated equally. Okay. The text we will be reading today introduces the idea that stereotypes can be harmful 
and that they can shape our identities in a way that restricts our options and hurts the way we relate to one another. So according to this, it's saying that stereotypes are harmful or are bad because it's going to affect the way that we identify ourselves and it's going to prevent us or stop us from some of the different options we have available to us and also the way that we are making connections. I might not be able to relate to someone else. For example, maybe I won't be re- able to relate to a male because of these stereotypes. Or I might not be able to relate to another female because of some of these stereotypes that might be applied to me or that might be applied to her, um, but not vice versa. Armin Brat, I'm going to assume that this is going to be the author of our text, is called a parenting expert who left his career in marketing when his first child was born because he wanted to be an active, involved parent. So our author is an expert in parenting. So he's an expert dad. And he used to work in marketing. So he used to sell stuff. And when his first child was born, so I'm assuming he has more than one child, he was like, "Mm, I'm leaving marketing. I'm not going to sell sell things anymore. What I'm going to do is I am going to focus on being a great dad. Okay, that sounds great. He has written six books. Look, he's made it a career. He's written six different books about parenting. And he has contributed to such magazines as the New York Times Magazine, the Washington Post, and Reader's Digest. I don't know about you guys, but these are very um, prominent magazines that I have heard of. Um, Maybe some of you guys have also heard of, but these are very prominent magazines. So this paragraph as a whole is giving me a lot of ethos because it's telling me that this Armin Brock character, I got to trust him because first of all, he's an expert in in parenting. He knows what he's talking about. He knows what it is to be a good dad because, you know, he's an expert. Expert. And also, not only has he written one book about Parrington, he's written six different books. Do you know how long it takes to write a book? You need to know what you're talking about to write a book. So he has to have some ethos here. And on top of all of that, on top of being an expert and on top of writing six books, he's also published in three of the most important magazines of all time the new york times the washington post and reader's digest this guy has to know what's going on there's a lot of ethos in here okay let's keep going from the bedford reader which is a um, textbook that is utilized in college bra offers a different view from Different view of men from that taken by Judy Brady in her essay, I Want a Wife. Um, This here is a link to this essay. It is a satire, which means that it's making fun of something. I highly encourage you guys to go ahead and read it if you're interested. If you don't, it's fine, but I'm telling you, you are missing out on something that could be very, very funny. So again, from the bed for reader, Bra offers a different view of men from that taken by Judy Brady in her essay, I Want a Wife. While acknowledging that women and men are not yet equal in child care, Bra holds that children's books are hardly helping. He uses analysis to show that the sly fox remains much more common than the caring dad. So what it seems like is trying to be said here is that men and women are not treated equally in child care, right? When we talk about children and who cares about them, we normally talk about women and moms and not really dads, but we do know that there are dads who are in the picture. So Brad here is holding something and he's not literally holding something. So I'm thinking here of the connotation and what that means, right? When I can hold something, maybe this is something that I believe or something that I think. So what this is trying to say here is that Brat thinks that children's books aren't helping when it comes to um, 
showing how men are in the child care system. It continues to say how women are um, more in the limelight or more in the stop spotlight compared to men. And he uses analysis to show that sly foxes remain much more common in that caring dad. So remember in the first video I talked about analysis and analysis is a breakdown of something. So he's going to be breaking down something in this essay and I need to figure out what that is. And based off of what was said actually up here, I'm going to assume that he's going to be breaking down children's literature because he talks about children's literature here. And he's also saying that children's books here aren't helping. So I'm going to actually scroll down here to my annotations and I'm going to predict, which is part of PQCS, that he is going to analyze children's literature or children's books. And let's see if that's actually what happens. Um, before I go into the actual directions, I do also want to highlight something about um, this text as a whole. I really, really like this because um, what he is doing here is he is writing an analysis, right? And he's writing a rhetorical analysis, but he's not breaking it down based off of the rhetorical strategies that are being used. He's breaking it down based off of um, something else, which again, we're going to figure out as we're reading. In my opinion, my prediction is that he is going to be breaking down some of these different types of children's literature. So I think that this is a great anchor text because it gives you an example of how you can write an analysis. Something else that I also appreciate about this is that it also includes different writing strategies, different rhetorical strategies within this essay. So again, not only is it an example of rhetorical analysis response, but it's also utilizing rhetorical strategies within. And then last but not least, this is also an argument, right? And I do want to remind you guys that for this to be an argument, it has to have a claim and it also has to include a counterclaim. If it doesn't include a counterclaim, then it's not an argument. It's now a persuasive essay or a persuasive response. Okay. So now moving into directions, what this is asking you to do is analyze the following essay by reading and annotating the text. We're going to identify soaps, soapstone, the central idea and analyze the rhetorical strategies used in the text. We can use PQCSV, which I utilize at the bottom, but it's not mandatory. However, it can be helpful. So if you guys forgot what um, SOAPs would stand for, or if you want to add a little bit more to um, what you are identifying for Soapstone, you can click this link here. And this link here has a list of different rhetorical strategies with their definitions and some examples. Um, I do want to also add um, that when you are identifying the central idea, you can also identify it as the claim, the argument, or the thesis. Sorry for all of the loud um, sounds coming from outside, but again, you can identify the central idea, the claim, the argument, or the thesis. And when you guys are identifying the rhetorical strategies, it would be also very helpful that you are now analyzing at the same time. Um, what you should do is talk about what writing strategy is included and the effect that it has. Why are they trying to utilize this writing strategy? What are we as the audience and as the readers supposed to gain or understand through these different writing strategies? Do these writing strategies help um, Armin Brat get his point across? Or is it not helping us? understand what he's trying to say, right? Is it something that's helpful or is it something that's not helpful? Please make sure that you guys are including that analysis because it will be helpful um, in this part.